Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about powers, but not easy ones like, say, 2 cubed, but harder ones for which you might think you need a calculator. For example, how about mm, 2.1 to the 3.37? Could we possibly do that without a calculator? Let's discover the maths. First of all, this power means 2.1 multiplied by itself 3.37 times. At first sight, it doesn't seem to make sense from the basic definition of powers. But this definition can be extended to include powers of fractional exponents and even irrational exponents. With a modern calculator, of course, it's easy to do this operation. But if you want to be good at mathematics, a calculator should only serve to speed things up, to speed up operations that you could do by hand given enough time. Mathematics that's reduced to just pressing buttons isn't true maths. And think about in the past when calculators didn't exist. How were operations like this done back then? Well, if we have an exponent that's in decimal form, then it's straightforward. We express 3.37 as the fraction 337 over 100, so that our power is 2.1 raised to 337 over 100. The 100 in the denominator of the index is the root that we have to take, and the 337 in the numerator is what we have to raise the result to. Fine, I'll just put these numbers into the calculator. 2.1 raised to the 3.37. Uh-oh, gives me an error. It's telling me it can't work in this range. So that's a bit of a problem. Well, maybe you won't get an error. Maybe you've got a more expensive calculator uh, that can handle bigger numbers. Anyway, it would be good to have an alternative method that we could use and that didn't depend on calculators and for which we understood the maths behind. Can you think of anything? Well, if you know about derivatives or L'Hopital's rule, then you may have guessed the answer. The key is to apply logarithms. Let's call the power we want to calculate z and then apply Napierian or natural logs, logs to base e, to both sides of the equality. You could also apply decimal logs. When we have a log of a power, the exponent goes out of the power by multiplying. In our case, that means we have 3.37 times the log of 2.1. What a great invention logarithms are, transforming powers into multiplications. We have John Napier to thank for this wonderful innovation in the early 17th century. Now the problem is to calculate the logarithm. Now, if you're not very young, you may remember that secondary schools used to provide booklets or textbooks containing tables for trigonometric functions and others, including logarithms. And that's how logarithms were obtained in the past. Before there were electronic calculators, there were also slide rules, such as the one shown here. To use one of these, a student had to be familiar with the properties of different functions. Calculators are very handy, but they also make us lazy, so that we end up just tapping keys and letting the machine do the work for us, instead of figuring out the maths for ourselves. Having said that, we are going to allow ourselves to use a calculator to give us the value of the logarithm that we need. So we'll key in 3.37 times the natural log of 2.1, 
which is 0.74193734477. And we get the product as 2.5003288852. There, we have the natural log of Z, but we want to get the power, which is Z. So we have to apply the exponential, which is the inverse function of the log. As we're dealing with the natural log, we need e to the x. So z is e to the 2.6003288852, which is 12.1865085. Great. We figured out that 2.1 to the power 3.37 is 12.1865085. Well, the calculation of the exponential in the past was done by the same log table, but in reverse, looking inside the table for the value in question and seeing with what value the logarithm argument corresponded. Two things to notice. First of all, we could have used decimal logs. In fact, they're the ones that normally appear in log tables. So when applying the inverse function, this would be y equals 10 to the x. In fact, we could use logarithms to any base, providing we apply the corresponding inverse exponential function. The second thing to be aware of, even though we've not made a big deal of it, is that the logarithm and exponential functions are bijective in their domains. And of course, are the inverse of each other. That's why we can use them in the way that we have done. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to get notification of future videos as we upload them. And I'll catch you again very soon to discover more maths.